yeah, shout, first of all, shout out MDB for hosting this and um, I love this club. Okay, um, really quick introduction to me. So I'm Colin, I'm a junior studying data science and with an emphasis in business analytics. And um, I'm also trying to attain a certificate called the SET certificate on entrepreneurship and technology. Um, this summer I'll be a PM, I'll be an incoming PM intern at Tile. And then a couple of my hobbies are basketball, League of Legends, piano. Um, really quick introduction about why I chose to do PM, even though I have like an engineering or like a data science background. Um, I've always thought personally that like software engineering would be the path for me. And, but it just didn't really strike the same interest and passion in me as I've seen with a lot of my peers when they, when I see their work and, you know, either working on an amazing product or developing like a solution. And a couple of weeks into my sweet internship in 2019 in summer, um, yeah, I was like on a hunt to talk to like as many teams as possible within the company to get like a sense of what they do and what they love about the role. And after talking to like designers, HR, other engineers and, and more, um, I found myself sticking with the product manager the most. And specifically talking to him made me realize that coming from an engineering background, I've always learned to approach problems from a how perspective, like how to find the right answer or how to find the most efficient solution. But throughout this internship, I found myself to have a much more profound interest in the why. For example, why the specific feature, why the specific type of customer. And talking to the PM about these ideas, he told me that he loved the passion and assigned me a couple product related tasks uh, related to user research. And these tasks made me like realize that I really loved defining the questions and laying out the solution more than just implementing the solution, which happens to turn out to be the crux of product management. Cool. Um, so for the layout of today's meeting, um, I'll be talking about mainly four things. Uh, so what is PM? Uh, is PM right for you in terms of job requirements, um, the right time to pursue PM? Uh, I'll also talk about product, product management at Cal specifically. So resources, classes, clubs, et cetera, you can do to get yourself involved. And finally, action steps. So early steps that you can take now um, to give yourself like a head start in the future. And um, after I finish each section, I'll wait around like five to 10 seconds for anyone that has any questions for, for me. But yeah, um, I'm going to get started right into the first section. So what is PM? Cool. So to start off, um, product isn't really like a major, like someone can study, like there's no product management course or major at Cal, or sorry, there is a course, but there's not a major at Cal. And I don't think any university sort of offered this um, today. Few folks graduate into it and most people learn by apprenticeship. So working under someone else or maybe like stumbling upon it um, accidentally in a workspace, you know, either doing like design or um, software engineering. They have, so current PMs, they usually have like very diverse backgrounds. They have murky responsibilities and wildly varied role, role definitions across companies. Um, and PMs usually sit at the intersection of development, uh, design and engineering, uh, and go to market sales and marketing where they research opportunities, guide strategy, and help take features from idea to launch. Um, so yeah, it's like a very murky definition of what a PM is. Uh, and the result has been a number of, I would say like dangerous myths about what the role actually is. So um, some common myths about product managers are that they're mini CEOs or they are the decision makers and um, PMs also need technical degrees. Uh, I'm gonna start with the first one. PMs are mini CEOs. I would say this PM, uh, sorry, this myth is accurate in some ways, 
since PM takes holistic responsibility for the product from the little details to the big picture, um, the PM needs to set vision and strategy and they need to like define success and make decisions based on that. Um, but in one of the most important ways, PMs do not have direct authority over other people on their team, which is the main differentiator from a CEO, right? Um, which this leads to another myth that they are decision makers. Um, as a PM, you would need to uh, learn, or if you haven't already, you need to lead your team without authority. So this means like influencing with your vision and your research instead of directly telling your team what to do. Um, PMs are really respected at most companies, but they're not more uh, respected than engineers. Uh, PMs need to, should lay out the well-researched trade-offs. They need to set timetables, uh, structure great discussions, um, but only in rare situations do they actually make the call. And the final myth was that uh, PMs actually need technical degrees to, you know, to, to line the job or to actually do the, do the right work. Um, but uh, PMs do need to have like a certain deep curiosity about the underlying technology behind the products and the projects. Um, they need to have some sort of humility about the details and the ability to, I would say like develop strong partnerships with engineering, but they don't actually need to have a direct uh, you know, degree in engineering. Um, moving on, so a lot of people have, or a point of discussion that I, I hear a lot is there's many different types of PMs and some people think of program managers, some people think of project managers and, um, and what we'll be talking about today is product. And I'll be talking about like a really brief overview of what each are and their main like differentiators. So a product manager is like you are in charge of a product, which is anything that can be offered in the market to solve a problem or satisfy a need. It varies from like a service or software to even a physical product. And responsibilities of a product manager includes like planning, research, forecasting and production. Um, what a program manager does is uh, leading these things called programs, which are different projects that are interconnected and are also part of the long-term business objectives. The program manager leads the program strategy um, objectives and they need to assess the business impact of whatever they're working on. And finally, a project manager is someone that leads a temporary project. So a project that is temporary in that it has like a defined beginning and end in time, and therefore it has like defined scope and, uh, and resources. So you will need to be a manager in this application of knowledge, tools, skills, and techniques to project, uh, to project activities to meet requirements. Um, so a really quick recap of the main differences is that product managers play strategic roles and setting you know, overall product direction. Uh, program managers uh, deliver like sustainable de benefits to the business and incrementally during the course of the initiative. And project managers, they manage the scope uh, and are, they are responsible for delivery, budget, resource allocation, and quality. Hope that clears things up. Um, to move on, what essentially as a product manager you are essentially the advocate for the customer to summarize the entire role into like one small sentence. You will need to learn their, their needs and also translate those needs into product goals and features. Then you make need to make sure that those features are, um, are built in a cohesive, well-designed way that usually solves, that actually solves the customer's needs and wants. Um, and you'll be also wearing many hats. So you'll be wor working in a very highly cooperative role. The product manager usually serves as the main liaison between engineering and other roles such as designs, quality assurance, uh, user research, data analysis, mar marketing, sales, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to, and all of these different groups, and it's usually the job of the PM 
to identify when one of these teams should be brought in and to fill in for them when they don't exist or they're not on top of it. And finally, you need to focus on everything from the big picture to the small details. Um, one day you might be brainstorming the three-year vision for your team, while the next day you could be working through the details of the buttons in a dialogue. So what are the main like functions of a PM? Uh, we would say that it will be broken down into four main categories, uh, research and planning, design, implementing and testing, and then finally product release. So to start off with research and planning, um, this is what all products and features start with. This is the time when the PM starts to think about what to build next. Uh, the next idea might come from a customer request. Uh, it could come from competitive analysis, new technology, uh, brainstorming, or even like the big vision for the products. And depending on what that is and the scope of the role, a big part of the PM's job is creating a product roadmap, which means figuring out a cohesive long-term plan for the team. Uh, then the PM needs to choose like a feature set. What a feature set is, is basically they need to talk out all possible sources to create a large list of potential features for development work. And then based on factors, based on such as like, like I said before, customer needs, competitive landscape, et cetera, they need to prioritize these features from the most important to the least important. And finally, after they have all this done, the PM starts to define success. They envision what the world will look like, you know, if this product is successful and use models such as OKRs, which is like objectives and key results to communicate what those most important goals are to their team. Next up is product design. Um, this does not just mean for the PM to design the UI, the user interface, or draw, draw out what the product will look like. Product design usually entails like defining the features and functionality of the product. Uh, the PM's role in product design varies substantially between companies and teams. Um, I would say the PM might sometimes might just like sit down with an interaction designer. They might just chat about the goals, brainstorm on a whiteboard, and then, and then iterate by giving feedback on the designer's mockups. I would then, when the mockups are ready, the, the PM might like send them to the team, to the engineers with just a couple sentences in an email. That's sort of what it looks like for uh, product design. Um, as for implementation and testing, after you know engineers start coding, the PM's job doesn't really just end there. Uh, during the implementation stage, the PM keeps track of how the project is going and they make uh, adjustments accordingly. During implementation, one of the most important parts of the job is actually helping engineers work efficiently. So the product manager will check in regularly with his team and learn how things are going uh, to find problems like features that look, you know, maybe a feature looked good during the design phase, but it didn't turn out as well when it was put into the real world. Um, to address like issues like this, PMs will use a method called dogfooding, which comes from the term uh, eat your own dog food. And this is basically using your own product yourself. For example, like companies, companies like Microsoft do this all the time where um, like people run, people working at Microsoft will run the next version of Windows on their own computers. Yeah. And finally, the PM will give feedback to the corresponding teams using specific metrics to make um, adjustments accordingly. And the last part of the functions of a PM is uh, when the product is finally ready to be released, the PM needs to make sure that the launch goes smoothly. Uh, the launch process includes running through like a launch checklist, which are final approvals from key stakeholders then PMs will make sure that the teams who actually support the product going forward are prepared and finally conduct lots of risk management to make sure that, to make sure and prepare for all the things that could go wrong. Cool. Um, I'm just gonna wait 10 seconds if anyone has any lingering questions.
Perfect. The second section for uh, this presentation is, is PM right for you? Um, so I'll talk about a couple of like job requirements. Is there, is there even a right time to pursue product management? Um, yeah, let's jump into it. So although I talked in the beginning about there's a common myth that PMs require technical expertise, it is actually one of the more if you want to have like a more scalable job and be able to do more flexible roles in the future, um, having technical experience is very important for um, enlisting in a PM role. Uh, in fact, many PM roles list like a requirement in their job descriptions for a degree in uh, engineering, such as computer science, data science, etc., or something along that tangent. And this gets like a lot of confusion sometimes. Like people ask if coding isn't really like a regular part of a PM's job, then why do a lot of companies require it? And in, I would say the simple answer to that is that many people without an engineering background will struggle to form a strong working relationship with engineers. Um, basically all of these like PM skills or whatsoever whatsoever soft skills that they have will go to waste if the pm alienates his engineers and really can't earn their respect or or understand their perspective pm i would say is a job where you would you need to like lead without authority and the only way to do that is to bring the team on board with your vision so um the important things in this part is to to have this sort of technical expertise and form a relationship of mutual respect with your engineers. Uh, companies almost always hire a product manager to join a team of engineers who already work for the company. They're not willing to hire someone who won't get along with the team or who can't earn the respect for of the team. Also, you would need to have a good, like really good intuition of how long engineering work should take. A good PM understands the technical framework he's working with, and they can help the team prioritize and make trade-offs between the time spent on engineering and the value of that work to the customer. And finally, you need to be scrappy and self-sufficient. Um, great product managers are action-oriented, and they're also passionate about delivering results. They will try to take care of what they can themselves, whether that's gathering data or fixing typos in their product. This frees up developers from the more tedious tasks so they can uh, focus on the more valuable work. So to quickly summarize this slide, um, technical expertise is not like required for many positions, but when you actually go to a lot of upper tech companies, especially in the FANG industry, it is a, a big requirement or a big suggestion that you know or else you won't be able to communicate effectively with your engineers and people who actually do under, understand the product on a very high technical perspective. Moving on, um, I'll talk a little bit about transitioning to PM because this is a very like common topic and common role from uh, a lot of people that I've talked to. Uh, especially in engineering or design, maybe like three or three, three to five years down the line, a lot of people might have plans to, you know, move up and transition into and into product management. Um, and I would say the main, the main things that, uh, from what I've heard to from PMs who have done this transition, their their advice is essentially this this uh, line of things to focus on when you're, when you're looking to transition into PM. So specifically for engineering, um, the four piece, main pieces of advice that I've seen are the most common pattern from uh, current PMs are having developing like a customer focus, uh, thinking big in terms of your work uh, being able to work on your communication skills better to uh, you know, either showcase what you've worked on or also communicate with your, with your, with your engineering manager about what you think should be done next. Um, and also suggestions on the product itself. 
And finally, specialization, which is essentially just working or essentially picking what you're really good at in terms of engineering and looking into if you can become like a PM in that certain area within your own company. Um, if you're part of design, uh, two common pieces of advice is, are practicing prioritization. So prioritizing which features to put out first is very easy to when you're designing like a wireframe or a mockup to um, come up with a lot of interesting features that you, could, you think could be done. But, you know, within the scope of time and also like resources, what exactly should be prioritized so that, you know, um, the business goals could be achieved in the shortest amount of time. And then also sharpening your analytics too. Um, whoops. And in terms of other roles, uh, if you're not part of engineering and design, three common pieces of advice are becoming more business savvy. So this, can, this could include taking a couple of business cl classes at Berkeley or um, basically taking a couple, reading a couple of business books or also honing your, uh, I guess, experience in the industry and developing that industry expertise. Um, and also, if you're already working within a certain company, how can you be helpful if you are that sort of product manager for your own team? What sort of benefits can you give in the current state? Cool. My next topic will be PM and Cal. I know, wait, five to 10 seconds if anyone has any questions. Perfect, in this section, I will be talking about resources that you could use, classes that you can take, clubs and organizations that you could join um, to pursue more product management experience at UC Berkeley. Um, and this is just from my experience to give a disclaimer. Um, there's, there might be a lot more, um, but this, these are the ones that I've personally felt or think are helpful. So there is a very useful course that, um, that is called IUR 186, and it's specifically built for product management. And in, in this class, you will learn essential PM skills by putting theory into practice on a product or idea of your choosing. Um, in this class, you will learn like techniques to accelerate product success. Um, you'll learn about like common mistakes in the industry. You'll work in a team of students comprising from like engineering, business, design, etc. And um, for the project that you will have throughout the semester, it will simulate real world cross functional environments where people with different skills will collaborate to build a successful product. Um, so I would highly recommend this class uh, if you're if you're sort of looking into how to become a good PM. Um, but as a disclaimer, this class will not prepare you for the interview process of a PM, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, for the product management program at UC Berkeley, uh, this is a program that's built by the Berkeley Executive Education Pro uh, Industry. And basically this is built for you to pragmatically practice and um, work on segmentation and targeting um, other core concepts of product management, such as like applying design thinking processes, um, expanding your agile skills and developing your understanding of customer focused design. Um, I've not personally taken this course, but from people that I've talked to, uh, this is this program works with like the best of Berkeley Haas, uh, especially the specifically the MBA program. And um, there is a professor that has led her name is Sarah, Sarah Beckman, and she, she has led the program for the past 13 years and continuously updates the program to reflect the, the latest research and industry best practices. So it's a highly rated class, oh, sorry, a program, and um, I definitely would take it if I had more time. And finally, um, the SET Certificate in Entrepreneurship and Technology. Um, this is a very common certificate that's you know, pursued by a lot of 
uh, UC Berkeley students and you know friends of my own too. But uh, this is this gives like students the opportunity to learn about technology innovation and also entrepreneurship through the Berkeley method of through the Berkeley method of entrepreneurship. Um, so in these classes that you can choose from, there's uh, I believe you you only need six units to basically get the, get the certificate. You need to take the the Newton uh, lecture series, and you can choose five units within the accepted courses within SET to attain a certificate. So you can potentially just get it done in one semester, which is actually what I'm doing this semester. But it's a very it's a super useful and insightful course, no matter what courses you choose to take within those five units. I chose to take uh, 186 product management, but um, all of them will prepare you and to become, or I guess, become more innovative leaders in your industry, jobs, or ventures, regardless of the field. Um, as for student organizations and just organizations in general that are really useful for pursuing like um, more experience in product management. Um, there's a club called Product Space at Cal that uh, is built just for developing like a product workspace or a community of people interested in product. Um, and even mobile developers at Berkeley, if you're sort of interested in product, you could get on a contract team and uh, think about iterations of what would be the best way to build like a mobile product for your client. Um, in terms of like organizations outside of Cal, um, two of my personal favorites are uh, Product Buds and also Louis, uh, Louis Lin's Interview Prep Community. Louis Lin is a famous uh, award-winning author for uh, a lot of current PM books out there. Um, but yeah, two of these communities are really, really nice. Product Buzz is like a space on Slack where you could find, you know, current jobs, um, current openings in PM, uh, look for people like that are interested in interview mocking with you and um, just staying up to like current news too. Like if you, if you want, if you want someone to talk about products with, um, this is like your community to go to. Perfect. Um, I'm going to wait five to 10 seconds again before moving on to my last section. Cool. Um, so if you ask interviewers what they look for in PM candidates, they usually, they'll usually say that they're looking for uh, smart people to get who get stuff done, which is a very like very broad term. But the requirements list will be more detailed, but it will ultimately boil down to two main criteria. So will you be can you be trusted to make the right decisions? And can you push through all of the potential roadblocks to deliver a great product? You will want to focus on these criteria when you are thinking about what kinds of experiences to acquire. And in terms of getting the right experience, um, what I found to be most useful, and this is tangent with along with a lot of advice I've heard from uh, friends and current PMs too, is to first of all, talk to as many PMs as you can um, at your favorite companies, uh, and also get, get yourself educated on uh, product news, and then also try to find yourself a leadership role to get involved with. This could be anything from a sports team, captain, or class president. Um, starting with talking to current PMs, um, you want to, or I, I think it's very useful to coffee chat as many PMs as possible to learn about their backgrounds and diverse experiences. From my experience talking to at least 20 plus PMs, um, not a single two pair has a similar sort of background. I've talked to people who've come, become a PM on accident. Um, I've had a, I've talked to a person who became a PM 
when they started off as a customer support caller. They come from like a lot of different sort of roots and it's always super interesting to learn how they became or got to that position. So I would recommend it's very useful to ask them insightful questions and also share your, as well as share your experiences about why you are interested in products. Um, and as a plus, current PMs can give you referrals um, and they could and they could even be a part of recruitment, surprisingly. Uh, one time I was talking to this 1 p.m. and I, I was asking about current openings in um, the role. And it happened to be that the role I applied to was directly under the, the PM that I was talking to his team. So he was the, the principal product manager for that team. And because of that, uh, he gave me like a referral for the for the recruitment process and it was a, I was much more accelerated. So you never know who you could be talking to. And if ever you ever strike like a jackpot like that, um, this could be super useful for your, I guess your professional development as well. Next will be, like I said, homing your product sets. Uh, from my personal experience and also talking to a couple of PMs too, the four main things that I think are really useful are reading tech and product newsletters, talking about product with your friends, building side projects that you find great fun and impact in, and finally listening to product podcasts too. So a couple of good examples that I personally use for product newsletters are uh, the TLDR newsletter, Robinhood Snacks, um, the Accelerated newsletter, and also the Morning Brew. Um, I think next up for like talking about products, I briefly, I briefly went over this, but I think this is probably the most important step. Um, if you can find a friend who's equally passionate or interested about like current product news, big company decisions, et cetera, with you. And if you talk about that, you know, maybe every morning, this will exponentially hone your product sense. And this will prepare you so well for a possible upcoming interview. Um, and in terms of like uh, working on your actual product skills yourself, like knowing the product life cycle, uh, building side products would be the best way to do so. So like learn by doing, uh, it's more fun with friends when you actually build side projects yourself. And this is a very good way to exercise your product sense. And finally, product podcasts are the same thing as newsletters. You just get um, yourself updated with what's currently going on in the news. You never know when an interviewer might ask you about like a recent you know, decision that's made by a big company and ask you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, so it's very useful and very beneficial for those type of interviews to be very updated, to listen to podcasts and read lots of newsletters. And finally, when I talk, uh, taking on leadership positions. So this could either be taking on a role on a lead executive team um, and set goals for that. So treat and treat that experience like a PM position. Um, set like certain product goals at the start, treat the uh, incremental process like a product life cycle um, and et cetera. I think that's a really good way for you to uh, build upon experience. And hackathons for side projects are extremely fun experiences for you to build project experience and also meet new people too. Um, I've personally been to five in my college career and I would say those are like one of the, some of the biggest highlights of my of my college experience, like period. Um, just getting to like meet new people, uh, go through like ups and downs with your friends or even strangers and be able to like make something that you can present, potentially win a prize and also, you know, maybe put, on, put it on your resume. And finally, the last topic that I would like to touch on is the, the PM interview process. So, um, those of you who are in software engineering or some sort of, uh, whoops, some sort of engineering backgrounds, uh, just like in software engineering, the PM interview process actually has like little relation to the actual, you know, job that 
of a PM itself. Um, but that's just the unfortunate reality of it. But to best prepare yourself for the types, different types of interview questions that you could get, um, study, um, study the different types, the common questions that people usually ask um, and watch YouTube examples of best ways to answer those questions. There's like very famous or yeah, very famous mock interviews that are, are posted online from like either Facebook or Google from their APM programs that are very, very insightful for what is the best way to answer those questions. And um, the interviewer also gets really good feedback too. So um, that's, I would say the best way to learn. Another really good way is to just mock interview with your friends. Uh, for example, when I mentioned Lewis Lin's interview committee in the past, that's a very good way to find strangers to mock interview with. Uh, you would, how that would work was, is that you set up a time to mock interview and then you both select a type of question that you want to work on. Um, and yeah, like I said here, try to interview with strangers, not friends. Uh, from my experience, interviewing with friends for a very long time gets repetitive and boring and you sort of lose that aspect of like foreignness and you get, you get really comfortable with them, which is not a good thing. And yeah, um, I could talk for a long time about the different types of PM interview questions and the different ways to answer them, but um, I'll just really quickly summarize the four main types of interview questions that you get if you're interested in PM and, um, and summarize it there. So the four main types are product design, estimations, product strategy, and behaviorals. So I listed a couple example questions for under each category. So for product design, uh, design a calculator for kids. And for these type of questions, you would need to like break it down in a very specific way for the, for the interviewer to understand. And they also expect that you, you follow the specific format. Um, usually these product design questions are extremely broad with the, with the intention of getting you as their potential product manager to define these questions and lay, lay out the solution. Um, so you would like ask questions to understand the problem, provide a structure in terms of how you would answer it, uh, you know, do things like identify the users and customers, talk about the different use cases for the product, et cetera, and talk about, you know, features and changes that would improve weak spots in the current design that you would, you would propose to them. Um, I would say from my experience, product design is the most complicated and hardest category of PM questions. Um, I would say like this is the, but this, would, this is also the most fun category to do, especially with um, a friend. And the next category is estimation. So this is very similar to like a typical consulting problem where you're asked to like market size or like estimate the, the revenue or like, um, for example, like estimate how many ping pong balls can fit in a bus. Uh, but the example I listed here for PMs, it might be a bit more technical such as uh, estimate the annual revenue for Gmail in the US. And you would need to like break down the problem into what you would think is the right solution, talk about your equation, et cetera. Um, product strategy is kind of similar to product design where you're, you're sort of like put into a more business perspective and they, the interviewers expect you to sort of understand what the strategy is behind Google, sorry, not Google, like the company that you're interviewing with, um, understand their business objectives really well understand their product line really well and be able to like make a conclusion and I guess a strategy based on that. Um, this one I have the least experience with, but I would say it's one of the more challenging ones. And finally, just behaviorals. This, these are questions that you would get for any type of interviews, but um, th these are like hypotheticals where, you know, people say, let's say your manager wants to make major changes to a certain product. What would you do? Um, it will range from like those type of questions to questions like, tell me about yourself or um, tell me about a product that you worked on, tell me about your favorite products, et cetera. But yeah, I think this essentially summarizes my presentation on product management. Um, 
thank you all for coming and uh, let me know if you have any questions, but that's, that's it for me. <laughs>